Yeah, this uh, comes as an actual huge surprise. The Acolyte, earlier we thought it was going to, it had a budget of $180 million, which is still absolutely insane, especially for that absolute asshole of a show. We now find out that it was $230 million and possibly into the $300 million once they do some more calculations. Fulfill your destiny. Theorysabers.com I don't know what the heck in that show cost $300 million. I'm super... I don't even know what to say, really. Because not only is that like a huge waste of money, but it's also just a slap in the face because of Kenobi, and you all know how much that costs, which was about $90 million. And I just feel like, how can you give such a massive budget that's like three times the size of arguably what would have been the biggest and most popular show in Star Wars history since Disney purchased. Especially if they had used Stuart Beatty's actual script of the three films, we could have had something really substantial and something actually amazing. But in turn, we got a really horrible script of the Kenobi show written by Joby Harold and directed by Deborah Chow, who I feel like were very unfit for the project. They should have just taken Stuart Beatty's script and gone with that. But with The Acolyte, it now seems that it's almost 300 million, and reports are saying that once they do calculate all of the everything, the receipts, it will be into the 300s. Disney has revealed that its controversial Star Wars show, The Acolyte, it's not controversial, dude. It, it was shit, it was a horribly written show, and it didn't get renewed for a second season simply because of that. It was so bad that not enough people watched it came in over the production budget with its costs hitting 230 million via Forbes. That's 50 million more than Dune 2. <laughs> You, you can bet that if The Acolyte was any good or had higher viewership numbers, then Disney would have never pulled the plug on it. It's as simple as that. In fact, well, they didn't even renew Kenobi, and that was 90 million, let alone The Acolyte, which was like three times that amount. The Acolyte was not as popular as Andor, which cost 250 million, and it certainly didn't come anywhere near numbers for The Mandalorian. Ever since its cancellation, we still haven't heard from Acolyte showrunner Leslie Headland. She claimed to be a Star Wars superfan, but that wasn't enough of a reason for people to watch the show she created. The first episode had high numbers, but viewership kept free-falling as the season went along. This series disappeared from the Nielsen's charts after its third episode. After we learn the rule of two, several people should lose their jobs. How does a show go to be cancelled cost that much? Well, as it has been covered many times, Kathleen Kennedy has a death grip on Iger's weak little butt. <laughs> The board are all useless puppets who never will take... To oh my gosh, man. Everyday Disney shareholders have absolutely no power to stage an open revolt or sue the board for failing their fiduciary duty. So once again, George Lucas' life work is further destroyed and forgotten. Yeah, what's the deal? How come the board's not saying anything about this? Or, or are they? Is anybody here that watches the channel, are you part of, are you like a big investor in Disney? Uh, I know that, you know, if you have a substantial amount of stock in Disney, then you do have some say and you're invited to some of those investor meetings. And I'm sure that there are some people here that uh, have some major stock in Disney and definitely listen to those boardroom meetings. Shout out to Manny Jacinto, though. Chimera was one of the good things about the Acolyte. Just another story of greed and hubris. Maybe they should make a show about the making of such a Foley. That I'd like to see. That would be interesting. How do they take such a horrible idea? Well, actually, an interesting idea of the act. The Acolyte was an interesting idea. I was pretty interested in it once I heard about it for the first time years and years ago. I think it was five plus years ago. And then inflate it into this weird shit show and charge almost $300 million, which probably is $300 million. Where does the money go? On this show, I could see, I could not see the money. At times, it looked like a CW production. Our sequences reshot multiple times because of lack of planning. Our producers skimming off the top. Yeah, you know, it, it kind of makes you wonder, where is all the money going? Are they doing reshoots? Are other things happening that we don't know about? This guy says, how so it looked and was dreadful. It, it looked absolutely horrible. You see the scenes in the actual show, and it looks like a really just boring set, just bland, nothing going on in the background, there's nothing, it's desolate, doesn't feel like Star Wars, there's just a freaking open field with a Wookiee when he was just fi fixing the ship, like, what there seems like it's from another galaxy far, far away, and that was something that George always really tried to focus on, was that everything was meant to feel like it was from another time and another place, regardless of what planet you're on. And I feel like they fail to do that. Whenever you have something in Star Wars that makes you reminisce this place, 
Earth and our time, you really got to switch it up and change things around. So, you know, if there are screws, those screws have to look like freaking space screws. They got to be something totally different than your typical Phillips head screws that we see at the hardware store or looking around your home. If you see anything that resembles today's world, it just takes you right out of it. And that's something that George and Ralph McQuarrie in particular, really made sure that they created this whole other feeling, a whole other realm when you were watching the films, right? Like if you go back and you watch one, two, three, four, five, six, everything does feel like it's from a different world, a different time, a different galaxy. But if you watch the newer films, it, you, you feel closer to it. Maybe it's the technology, maybe it's the props used, maybe it's in the show, some of the, the lack of Ralph McQuarrie, the lack of feeling of everything is just different, the architecture, Everything has a different feeling in George Lucas's films, but nowadays it's um, very akin to what we have going on here. Yeah, it's just not like a laughing fest now. Everyone's just laughing about this. So, I mean, look, uh, D Disney tax documents reveal total production costs for the accolade. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy how all this is just coming out. $22.5 million per episode. Wow, 172 million pounds. So they did 38 million Great British pounds in 2022, 134 million pounds in 2023, making for 172 million pounds, which is absolutely insane. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 28.75 million per episode. And even taking into account the historic exchange rates seen in September, Blue Stocking spending the still amounted 218 million slightly better. Maybe the catering team chose to get Nando's on a couple of afternoons instead of defaulting to fresh better, but still not altogether great. And all of this spending was absolutely for nothing. And what does that teach them? I hope it teaches them that they need to hire some better writers, you know, some more imaginative and creative people that really give a damn about Star Wars, but also really understand the characters. And I think Stuart Beatty is the right man for the job for really any Star Wars project because he has the passion for it. He cares. He doesn't want these characters to just go to waste or be destroyed or disrespected in any sort of way. And I think when you're writing a Star Wars project, that's probably one of the most important things. You know, how would these characters be written if George was in this room? How would this story be told if George was here, if Ralph McQuarrie was here? You have to think. All of these people that created the first six films or helped had a hand, how would they, you have to be like an AI. Like, how would you emulate this while still telling your story with maybe your spin on it, but all centered through the same sort of confines and rules that George has established? I think that's the only way to really go forwards. We'll see what happens going forwards. Will they continue to make mistakes and lose money and millions and millions and hundreds of millions on god-awful shows that just really not only make them lose money, but also ruin their brand image and ruin anybody's trust in them to make new projects so that the next time something comes out, people are just going to scoff and be like, nah, I'm not watching that. I'll skip it. Or they're going to be like, you know what? The last one was amazing. I'm going to go and watch it. Case in point, Solo. Last Jedi was absolute dog shit and people really were pissed off about it. And what they did with Luke. And so they didn't go and see Solo because they're like, nah, the last one was shit. But what about before The Last Jedi? Rogue One. People loved it. So they went and they saw The Last Jedi. Of course, because it was also a continuation, but because Rogue One was great and we saw Vader. Oh my God, what are they going to do with Luke now? So make better decisions, hire better people, passionate people, people who actually have watched Star Wars and uh, care about the lore and care about George Lucas. That's all I got to say about that. And maybe they won't lose, you know, $230 million dollars nor should it ever even cost that much. Anyways, hope you guys have a great day. May the Force be with you, always.